Me too. Let's go. Okay. Uh, well, well, welcome everyone to the Smokestack Commission Task Force uh, for our January 13th, 20, maybe 2021 meeting. Um, I guess to let me first all start by uh, calling roll here. I think we have uh, we have on my screen. I have uh, Ken Granada, uh, myself, William Applegate, John Massillon, uh, Marie Del Chapo, Edmund Most, uh, Mayor Tecklenburg, uh, Liz Bailey, Latanya Gamble, and Andrew Dixon. Is there anyone else who's who's either called in or that I'm not seeing on my screen. Okay. Um, well, I think the first order of business here on our agenda was to re review and approve the December meeting minutes. Has everyone had an opportunity to review the meeting minutes? And do we have a, everyone approve the meeting approval. minutes? Okay. I'll second that. Okay, thank you. Um, and then we're then next on the agenda was a presentation of any additional information by the city or, or the commission. Uh, Mayor Tecklenburg, is there any, any additional information that's come to light uh, subsequent to the last meeting related to, to the smokestacks? I'm going to defer that question, if you don't mind, uh, Mr. Chairman, to uh, Edmund Most, who's you know the project manager and would would know better than I. Okay. Yeah. So there there is not any additional information. Um, I, I can provide an update as to what Craig Bennett's office is working on right now, if this is the appropriate time to do that. But there isn't any additional information uh, that's been shared with us. Okay, thank you. And um, I want to welcome uh, Councilman Mitchell, who has gotten on now. So we just got started, Councilman, and we just reviewed and approved the meeting minutes. And we're trying to determine whether there are any additional uh, information by the city uh, since our last meeting. And it sounds like there's not any additional information or presentation of information. And uh, Mr. Bennett is, is not with us today, but um, so really, this is our opportunity, I guess, to do a, a follow-up conversation and see, see where we are since the last meeting. Uh, and I, I really had to open the floor uh, for conversation uh, at this time. All right. Well, um, uh, could I ask Edmund to, to elaborate a little more on what um, – Mr. Bennett is up to, and maybe it's just what he reported he would be doing last time, but he's the most active participant in all of this probably right now. Yes, sir. So um, they're continuing with design development. I did check in with their office today um, and they're transitioning into doing the construction documents, which are the actual drawings that a contractor would bid on. Um, as part of that, they need to develop the bid package, which is the specifications and what we call the front end, which is um, really kind of, it, it gives the parameters of the contract duration and damages and whatnot. Um, they're planning, and we have that proposed schedule in the meeting minutes, and, the, and they're planning on having those contract documents done at the tail end of February. Um, I will continue to encourage them to move as quickly as they can. Um, but, you know, th this is important to, for them to be precise and have uh, complete drawings. Um, eventually, they'll, they'll be working into the bidding and construction contracting will be made public. So in March, we plan on bidding these documents out with bringing a contract to council. Now, currently, he's doing uh, plans for the entire renovation. So the removal of the liner and then the structural stability and then the repointing work and then the new covers or refurbished covers on top. Um, we may be able to do some acceleration in that March and April timeframe. And that's what we do in capital projects is we try to look at the, the, the sequence of schedule of how long it needs to be advertised. Um, the internal review process and, and when it actually goes to council, we may be able to shave some time off in there. Well, 
Thanks for that update. And uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman and um, task force members, and, and let me start by thanking everybody again for your participation. Um, I, I must say that um, I, I think the situation is, is similar to where we left it um, in December at our last meeting. And um, I, I thought it was pretty clear that we had a consensus um, among the membership here that, um, yeah, all things being equal, we'd, we'd love to preserve and save the smokestacks. Um, so, so it really just um, kind of gets down to a matter of, of how to pay for it. And, and um, I, I, I guess uh, for lack of a better word, I, I had um, challenged um, um, Mr. Chairman, you and in, in your representation of the foundation and John, uh, particularly uh, in, in representation of the Preservation Society to see uh, if those organizations were, were uh, willing and able to, I know they're able, whether they were willing to help us um, meet the financial requirements to, to do the full re um, uh, preservation. So um, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but um, do y'all have any feedback from, from your groups about, about um, helping pay for this thing? Um. Well, Mr. Mayor, um, I'll go first. Um, I, I did check with um, the, the staff and, and some folks at the Preservation Society. And as you said, and as you know, um, we're supportive of uh, renovating, uh, preserving these and, and, and supporting the community in doing so. Um, as far as the fundraising part of it, um, uh, the, that's a harder question. I mean, we, we certainly don't have um, the kind of money that, that you were talking about last time uh, immediately available. Uh, and the time to plan a fundraiser and, and work with the community on a fundraiser, we just, I, we just don't have enough time to really make what I would consider to be a firm commitment. But but we, we would like to support the community in doing it. and. And uh, what I would suggest, at least for the task force to consider, like you said, is there's, I think, support for preserving them all the way around. Um, based on, on what I heard last time, <clears throat> it sounds like the, the liners are um, the, the most imminent threat and, and um, perhaps try to, to, to bifurcate or, or do something with the project to address the most pressing need um, what I heard last time was we really don't know exactly how much we need, what the project cost is going to be. And at least from my standpoint, um, my group is supportive, but um, without a real plan to do it. And, and we think we, we would like to work with Councilman Mitchell and, and Ms. Gamble and, and Councilwoman Del Chapo and anybody else in the community that's involved in it to come up with a, a way to do it. Um, but, but right now we don't have any specific proposals to make or time to put it. So, um, I, I think that probably merits some further study, uh, but I, I'd like to, to kind of put that out there for consideration. I, and I'll let Mr. Applegate kind of tell you where his group is. Well, thank you, John. And, and I'd say the report that, that I have has probably been can take pretty much from John's is a similar approach, which is that sort of what was uh, presented or discussed in the last meeting, just that from the timing of it, obviously the historic Charleston is advocates, uh, is an advocate for the preservation and obviously wants to help in any way, shape or form it's possible with the timing, um, you know, situation, not unlike the city, and a lot of unknowns, and, and obviously as a, as a group, it's a revenue-based nonprofit. So it's, uh, you know, been a very hard year. And so, you know, there's just work to be done. I think, as I understand it, there's been conversations and obviously the historic Charleston is willing to put to get, put it together a campaign. Uh, but at this time, you know, similarly, I think that the goal would be to, to, to move for a, 
to pres preserve the, the smokestacks, uh, work towards eliminating the danger that exists immediately so that we resolve this community issue, and make sure that the residents are safe and that we have some time to you know, work on, on the, the funding matter for the bigger part of the project, I guess, or the, or the other half of the project. I know that, um, and would encourage, I know we, uh, it's been a crazy time of year and um, a crazy year, but I know we, there was some discussion. I know uh, that maybe Councilwoman Del Chapo might have something to chime in on this as far as specific funding ideas. You know, I think we did, as a recap, we talked about, I think some ideas that still have a lot of possibility that range from uh, a, a potential sale of the property to, uh, you know, some private sources of funding that, that you know, may already exist uh, to fundraising efforts that could be made and to, you know, any additional analysis of the TIF or, you know, that may, we might have a little better eye on as this year develops and we get past this COVID uh, nightmare that we find ourselves in. So uh, is there anyone, uh, Councilwoman Del Chapo, do you have any additional information? I know you suggested possibly there was information that you might have in the last meeting. So I met with a, de a developer and landowner in that area, you know, through the east side on Monday, who's going to put together a proposal of some different options and opportunities that we may want to explore. Um, so I think, which I, he has a vested interest, obviously in this TIF performing well um, and wants to save the smokestacks um, in addition. So I think he'll be very aggressive in what he puts forth. And I wanted something very spelled out and clear in writing that Mayor and I could get, walk through and in this group as well and figure out what would be feasible and what wouldn't. Um, and I think, I guess, you know, as kind of a, a, a frustration that I'm feeling is um, we all want something done, but we're gonna make somebody else do it. And, and, that, and that is frustrating to me. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of opportunities out there um, and, and there's more, phone, there's more coffees and phone calls like the one I had on Monday morning. Um, and I think what we need from this group today, because this is coming before council in two, in two weeks from yesterday, is a commitment that we believe we can come up with the funding or not. Um, you know, whether there's, you know, wiggle room within the TIF or, or, or something else, we have to go based on the parameters upon which this task force was defined, which is the city will be on the hook for no more than 50%. So I think today we just need to have a really, you know, grown up conversation on if we, given that parameter, and the expectation that it won't change. Like I said, maybe it will, but I'm not gonna predict the future. I'm gonna go based on what our expectation is right now. Do we believe we can come up with the 50%? Um, which, you know, we have cost estimates out there. And if we go based on that and we just take half, you know, if we say it's, you know, one to 1.5 million, roughly in there. Do we think that's feasible that we can come up with this? Um, I personally think it is. Um, I think it's, I don't think it's, that's challenging at all. I mean, not, you know, not at all, but I think that's very feasible for us to come up with. Um, 
but it, but it's going to take all of us. Um, and so I think, you know, I want um, a little bit more um, like maybe <laughs> aggression from historic Charleston Foundation and Preservation Society that, you know, of, of really helping us get behind this and, and push and, you know, leveraging the incredible networks that y'all have and um, moving beyond a traditional fundraising event or things like that and um, into some other opportunities, because I think that's how it's going to happen. Um, and, and that's what I would like to get a sense from today of do folks on this call feel, feel as optimistic as I do that we can come up with the remaining 50%, given the cost as it is now. Um, and the cost may change. Hopefully it comes down. But again, I don't want to um, make any kind of expectations. I want to go with the information we have right in front of us today. Um, and I should be having this proposal from the developer I spoke with on Monday within the next couple days. And that'll give us a little bit more driving force. But I think we need to have as many options as possible. Um, so what is our goal? Are we trying to raise two million? So Edmund, correct me if I'm wrong. Is it, weren't we saying it'd be roughly three million to preserve both smokestacks? That that's right. And you know, what we're looking the, at one point five million. We would okay. need. Right. That's the short answer right now. And I, I think there's a lot of people out there that are thinking, well, we could do this for a lot less money, or we could find a less expensive way to do this. And you know, here in capital projects, we have to look at worst case scenario, because if we budget for $2 million, we put it out to bid and it comes in at 2.2 .2 or 2.1, we can't bring a contract to council. The project is not funded and the bids will expire after 30 or 60 days. So we lose that whole exercise of going through a public bid or, or, however, whatever the process is, and it puts us in a bad situation then. So when we put our budgets together, we're, we're thinking worst case scenario. So when that bid comes in, we have to analyze it and make sure that that's a responsible bid, but that we're covered with our budget. And there are going to be a lot of ancillary costs associated with this. Everyone keeps thinking about the construction costs. There are other costs associated with this. There's paying the professional engineer, there's paying third party inspections, any potential road closures and stuff like that. And we would try to minimize all those other secondary costs that are part of the total project budget. So we're thinking it's gonna be $3 million, but we may be pleasantly happy and it's a lot less than that. But okay. we won't know that until we open the bid. Okay, so what I'm trying to ascertain is what this committee is trying to raise as the 50%, is that the 1.5 or is that the 2 million? Because you don't know the other costs. Are we, should we go for the 1.5 or should we go for 2 million even from, you know, trying as far as fundraising? That's what I'm trying to understand. So we, we believe it's a $3 million total project cost and the city currently has $700,000 budgeted for it. So if I could defer back to you, Mayor, I, I thought, you know, if, if we get close to that, that you would speak with council to see if there were other avenues that the city could work to try to gap that difference. Well, well, based on what Councilmember Del Chapo mentioned, which was council's charge to us, I think the goal ought to be a, a million and a half. Um, you know, and if we, we, if, if, if we were able to achieve that, I, I feel confident that, that council would, would, in addition to the 700 they've got, put up the other uh, part of their half to make it happen. Don't, uh, council member Mitchell and Del Chapo, would, would y'all read it the same way? That's, that's how I understood it, is that, you know, we already have kind of 700,000 in, in the bank. Right. Um, and so to get, you know, 800,000 more from the city to get to 1.5 and then 1.5 from outside sources. Right. And, and that's okay. what I, that's the same thing I would do. Cause I would uh, even, 
you know, uh, pushed my colleagues to to uh, come up with re remainder to make up the 1.5 because uh, most of the time they're going to really gear everything to me since, you know, <laughs> I represent the district. So I would push them to even come up with the, uh, to make the additional money to come up with the 1.5. And I would talk with them individually if I have to, to make up the difference of the 1.5. And I know wow. that it, it'll be a hard fight, but I think they would come, you know, would push to do that with the 50%. And that's right. what they voted on. So you can tell well, me. And, and, and I, if, if I can, I'll, I'll try to address uh, mostly um, Councilwoman Del Chapo's comments. Um, uh, and, and again, I'm um, not sure it'll be a, a, a fully satisfying response, but I'll try to be as candid as, and straightforward as I can. Um, I, at the Preservation Society, as I said, um, the, the staff is excited about um, the project and, and fully supportive of saving these and, and the community's effort and desire to do so. Ours is the same. Um, and from a timing standpoint, um, um, what we don't want to do is write a check we can't cash and, and tell you we can raise all this money without really having any feedback from our constituency. And, you know, you know, we are willing to do what we can to help, but um, from a timing standpoint, the first substantive meeting that I was in was the one about 30 days ago, which was right before the holidays. And, and so um, again, uh, while we're supportive and we wanna help and we'll do our best to help, if, if you ask me, can the Preservation Society commit to raising 500 to $750,000 right now, I would say candidly, I can't make that commitment because I just do not know. I think for us, we really have to, to um, uh, you know, talk with, you know, you and William and Councilman Mitchell and and the others in the community and our own constituency to get a better feel for that. And and that's not a no, but it it also is not a yes right now. It's just the timing has not permitted us to do that. Well, um, let me ask one. Uh, question that we that came up briefly in our last meeting, which could save us a little money. Did anybody look into um, uh, any tax uh, credit that someone might be able to um, uh, get from this historic uh, preservation expense? And we did or, not. not William, I don't know if y'all had anybody at the. Um, at the foundation look at that. We have not looked at that or perhaps if, if a developer is involved, he or she might have looked into something like that, but but I have not looked into it myself, Mayor, or had anybody at the uh, society do it. And I, I might just suggest to, I mean, again, and it's not, I, I appreciate the timing and I think we, you know, there, there'd be some decisions or recommendations we could go ahead and make, I know consistent with uh, the council's desires and hopefully, you know, in the consensus we have here so far, but, you know, one issue is being discussed and, and councilwoman that, you know, that you raised is potential interest, you know, or involvement by, uh, you know, private developer, you know, that instant, that, you know, that example is a, a situation where the, the, then the money is, is taken care of. So, that, you know, the timing, if we had a little bit more time, if that is a viable option, there is no need to raise a dollar. That, that will solve that problem completely. So, you know, we know that we're going to have a large challenge. If the task at hand for this panel right today is to raise an extensive amount of money, are we... Do we think as a, as a community, as a team, we can probably figure this out over time? I'd, you know, I'd like to be optimistic too. I think it is important and I think the community seems behind it. Can we commit to that today? I, I, don't, I don't think that's probably something we could do today, uh, but we also are still exploring options. And I think, again, one of those being whether there are some tax incentives and other, other deals that could go down that might help one rid the city of this responsibility uh, and, and give us a remedy that we're looking for. So 
Does that, does that make sense, Councilwoman? So, I mean, you know, we don't have to have, and Mayor and Edmund, I mean, you can correct me if I'm wrong, we don't need to have the money in the bank in two weeks. No. But we, we need to have a, until we sign a, a plan. Right. Which will um, probably be in law. You know, we have the faith that we can come up with it, um, you know, pretty assuredly. Can I can I ask a, a quick proceed? Oh, I'm sorry, Councilman Mitchell. I won't go ahead. Go ahead. I'll wait. I, I was just going to ask a quick procedural question um, because I am generally aware, but not involved, that that there is a group called Friends of the Low Line. I know Muni had a group um, that raised some money, and from the standpoint of, of of the mechanics of it, would this task force be? kind of a fundraising entity or is, are those other groups, you know, something else besides a city task force or committee? And I guess the real question I'm wondering is, if we're gonna raise this money, do we need to form a group separate from this group to do it? Or is that the purpose of this group? So, so uh, I'll use Friends of the Muni as an example. They formed a separate um, nonprofit 501c3 to raise the funds. The reason why it made sense for them is they intend over um, you know the future to to have additional projects to improve the clubhouse to help pay for maintenance of the course. You know they should be around for a hundred years, I hope, and always be there to help. Uh, be an adjunct to support the Muni. Um, frankly, I, I, you know, we did talk about maintenance of the smokestacks at the last meeting, and there will be some costs. But, but I kind of view this as a as a one shot deal um, to to get them preserved, and and that the city, if we preserve them, um, the the maintenance costs aren't so high that 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 the city wouldn't just. Uh, I, I don't think you'd keep a separate organization alive just to inspect the smokestacks every five years and and then repoint them every 20 years. You know what I mean? So um, it would make sense to me um, that, that one of y'all who have a nonprofit certificate kind of be the agent um, for a fundraising effort. Um, I mean, but you can form a separate entity if you want to. Thank you. May, may I throw an idea out? And I'm sorry, forgive me for being late. I just couldn't get on today. But I finally found a way. This yeah. is Deborah Anderson. Uh, and this is just an idea that's on my brain. So I better spit it out right quick. Um, <clears throat> could we possibly, in raising funds, consider, you know, I've seen organizations that would be laying a brick sidewalk or something of that nature. Is there a way to possibly put some type of plate to uh, give the name of whatever organizations that get involved, um, to say that they gave, if they reach a goal of say $100,000 uh, towards it, could we possibly look at inviting other nonprofits to get involved with this task and then name a brick in their name to uh, validate the fact that they uh, contributed a considerable amount, considerable amount of funds to the project? Just a thought. Yeah, that's a good thought. And and I think um, William and John, I don't mean to pick on y'all. I really view a fundraising effort to be community wide, but 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 hopefully uh, kind of led and sponsored by y'all. But I mean, I, I would like to think Latanya and Deborah that folks in the neighborhood would like to buy a brick or donate and you know, we do a GoFundMe page. You know, it's amazing how many people will give to almost anything these days if you just put it out there. And and we got a little story to tell that's nice that I think some would attract some 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 donors. Uh, I you know, it, at least to start with, as as Councilmember Del Chapo is is uh, kind of trying to reach for here. It's just a commitment on all of our part that, yeah, we're going to somehow raise a million and a half dollars to make this happen. 
and, and and at least for me, I almost I try to speak for William. I, I appreciate that, and and I don't I don't feel singled out in the least. Um, and and as I said, my the folks I've talked with are excited about it and willing to help. Um, but but at this point, to to give you a specific commitment, that's where I, I kind of draw up short because, you know, frankly, we need a little more time to figure that part out of it. But but I I, I guess I'll put it to the group. Is there any reason why we can't, and I'd suggest that we consider making that report to city council. And, and again, I understand that Councilwoman Del Chapo um, is, is frustrated by that. And, and I, I know y'all have probably been thinking about this and working on it longer than I have. And, and I get that. I, I just want to say that even at the city council standpoint, um, I'm going to really, when I work hard, to even push to even get the additional money because even if you get the additional money, we're going to have to pull it from somewhere, somewhere else and cut something else to even get that particular uh, money that we don't have appropriate already. Mm -hmm. So someone is going to go lacking or something is going to go lacking when we pull that money from somewhere else also. And um, so that's why we look at even public-private relationship on a lot of different things, you know, uh, even in the city, because that's what we have to do now, the way things stands even with budget wise and everything else because this uh, pandemic came and hit everyone hard. So these are people that we would have to cut and doing certain things with another $870,000 that we have to pull from somewhere else. We're gonna have to cut someone, uh, cut something to even get that amount of money to uh, make up the uh, 1.5. So everyone's gonna be hurting a little bit to even get this done if we want it done. And since the community is adamant by it, that's why I would push my colleague to even come up with that, even to cut someone else who is going to get angry because they're being cut. But then that's the only way we can get it done. It would be nice if we could look at uh, several options. This is Deborah again. Several options to um, help raise the funds collaboratively because there are quite a few things that we could do you know, it, and, and I might have missed it. What is the deadline? What is the time limit that we have right now? Well, that, that, that's another aspect of this is uh, time is of the essence because if we want to try to get the stack safer before the height of hurricane season later this year, and it's already 2021 and um, but I, I mean, the way Edmund explained it, our capital project works when by the, by the time we um, get council to approve a contract where we're making a financial commitment to pay, um, our, our budget and finance department uh, somewhat insists that we know where the money is. Um. To kind of go on what Deborah was saying, which I think is very valid, you know, you buy a brick and um, and stuff like that that people get behind. It would it could the East Side Community Preservation Society and HCF come together and create, um, you know, a GoFundMe page, and you have these tiers. If you donate X amount, you get this. If you donate X amount, you get this. You know, I know y'all's groups have, you know, I don't know, you got tote bags or whatever. You know? I mean, you know, to if we kind of get the ball rolling and people see that there's a push behind this, and then it's it takes a little bit of this pressure of um, you know, for HCF and preservation society to have like a a real formal capital campaign um it's a link that can be distributed around can go in y'all's newsletters can go on your social media you know things like that um you know i don't think the 1.5 million is going to come from that i'm not i'm i can be pollyanna but i i'm not you know that out there <laughs> Um, is that something that those three groups could work on and, and come together on and um, start generating some of that interest? 
I, I can, you know, I'll speak first to Tulsa and tell you that that's definitely something that, you know, we can do and we support that and, you know, can definitely get involved in, in starting that momentum process. So certainly. Yeah. And, and I, I, our group um, is the same. I think we would certainly love to partner with you, Councilman Mitchell, Ms. Anderson, Ms. Gamble, anybody to, to roll this thing out and, and try to get some interest going in it. And we, as the mayor said, we do have some infrastructure out there, you know, already. So we don't, we're not starting from zero uh, as far as doing it. Because I think that's one of the things that's really special about this project is the groups that it's brought together. Um, and, and so I think you expand your reach that much more. Um, and make people feel as though they can be a part of something bigger. Um, so I, I, I love that idea that Deborah had. And I think, again, that just lends a little bit of value and something a little bit more special to it. And if you can only donate, you know, $25 or $50 or whatever it is, um, you know, you, you're, you know you're, you're feeling a part of something. Um, and, you know, you at least get something from that and, and build momentum that way. And we hope that something large, you know, something larger comes along, a developer or whatever it is. And, um, and, and that kind of makes it for the remainder. Um, or, you know, then this money that's been raised goes into something else at the community center. You know, if we're able to take care of the smokestacks completely, maybe this money goes towards something else to do at the community center or in that, or in the East side community, um, you know, I don't know how that all shakes out, but um, I mean, like I said, you know, that's just something I keep talking about with people. And that is very noted is the groups. This is drawing together for a common purpose in a way that I don't, I don't think we very much see. Okay. And so if the, oh, three, you know, if the Neighborhood Association and HCF and Preservation Society could, you know, plan a little powwow and, I mean, I'll throw a link out there and see what we can get and, you know, who knows? <laughs> because it's going to take that. In order to raise that kind of money, you have to put forth several efforts. Well, I shouldn't say you have to, um, but you should. I think we should. And, and it's something that you just move quickly. We don't have a lot of time. We could even do something via television station. You remember the old, well, I shouldn't say old time because I'm only about 29 years of age. But anyway, remember, I'm just kidding. Remember the telethons that we would have as, as kids? And they would have those telethons? You could even do something like that. If we get one of the television stations who will support us and back these efforts, you'd be amazed because you're right. Councilwoman, when you get people excited about something, it is amazing what happens. We could have a GoFundMe page. Uh, we could sell the bricks. I mean, there are several ideas that we can do. And I suggest that we consider doing several of them, not just one, you know, several that will come together in coordination and just put it out there. And then let's see what magically happens. Latanya, are you there? Could you speak for the ECDC? Deborah, you're doing a great job. You're on the board. <laughs> <laughs> you're doing a great job. Um, yes, um, we're looking at other, I think um, all those are good ideas and we should um, get started right away, but we do need to know the timeline um, and maybe set forth a goal. Obviously, you know, our neighborhood association isn't going to raise a whole lot of money, but we certainly are willing to add our hand in there and do the best that we can. Well, I think that's important, Latanya, and I'm so glad to hear you and Deborah both um, um, make make a commitment. Because I mean, even with with somebody giving twenty five dollars to have their name on a brick or fifty dollars or something. And, and you get community buy-in, particularly around the neighborhood. I mean, everybody came to the meetings saying they want to keep them, right? And um, so, so I, I, I think uh, y'all are on to something here. 
I'll, I'll commit personally a thousand dollars, uh, William and, and John and Latanya, y'all get a account set up and let's start raising some money. Well, uh, uh, and Mr. Chairman, I don't want to preempt any, um, dialogue, but, but would it be appropriate for me to make like a motion for us to consider to, to kind of, um, uh, consolidate, I guess, or, or put our report together to council. Uh, and, and if so, I'd be glad to try to be the person everybody hates, which is the sum up guy. Um, to, yeah. so. uh, John, uh, we'd appreciate that. I think we've had, uh, you know, good talk consensus, you know, and, and, and consensus really from the last meeting into this meeting and have some ideas that we're generating. So I think it's appropriate based on all we've heard to, Put something out there that would help us towards a recommendation that's obviously that the council is anxiously waiting. Okay. Well, um, let me let me. Oh, I'm sorry. One, one second. Seems like was, Mr. Yeah. Most might have a question here. Yeah, there, there's one thing I wanted to kind of recap here. So, you know, the reason why we're all together here is is the safety driven aspect of this project, but also the preservation of it, which is tied to the safety aspect. So. What I'm hearing today, and I'm trying to be very independent from, from this commission and be more of an advisor, is I'm, I'm hearing we need time to do this fundraising effort. And I think that's a fair request, but for, for what I do in my office, I have to address the safety aspect and I have a certain path to do that. One of the things that we could do is have Craig Bennett continue down his road of putting the documents together, but structure them slightly a little differently where there is an alternate inside the construction documents. So the base bid could be the removal of the liner. And again, he would have to agree to this approach, but the removal of the liner, which has the biggest safety factor that he talked about at the last meeting that we had. He's concerned about that catastrophic failure if it was to fall in on itself and blow out the side. So we do have funding right now, city funding, that could fund that part of the project. So Craig could continue to do his documents. You all continue to have some time. I don't know how this works with the recommendation to city council, but if, if we do not come up with, as a group, with the money at the end of this process, we can still address the safety factor come April then. That would be great. Uh, thanks, Evan. Yeah. All right, That's well. Fair. Awesome all right. idea. I would agree with that. I well, agree too. Yeah. If, well, John, I, John can, in yeah. light of that, you wanna, you wanna make your comment or motion? Well, well I, based on my notes and I'll try to, to sum this up, as I said, but but uh, here here goes. Um, so what I would do is is move that the task force um, prepare a report to city council um, with with the following main points. First, that the task force unanimously uh, supports um, the community uh, and and would like to preserve the smokestacks. So I, th I think that's a, a, a unanimous consensus. Um, going to, to Edmund's point, um, the reports indicate that the most pressing um, risk or public safety issue is the collapse of the liners. And so to pursue, um, however Craig would put it, but a, a bifurcated or bid within a bid to see if we can contract for and fund the as soon as reasonably possible demolition of the liners to try to um, increase the safety factor. That um, the um, community leaders, uh, the Preservation Society, the Historic Charleston Foundation, and anybody else that's interested in it, um, uh, 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 try to coordinate or uh, convene a group to fundraise uh, uh, to, to raise enough money to, to complete the preservation of the, of the stacks. And that um, we reconvene this task force for the purpose of 
getting further information about the um, project costs, not just the construction costs, but the full project costs, and, and further reporting on fundraising efforts and, um, and to, to see how successful we are when we actually contact people. And those funding sources sound like uh, either um, a combination of the TIF funds, um, community contributions, and perhaps a private partnership or private sale of the stacks. I don't know if that's too rambling, but um, those are all my notes about what we talked about. And I can send somebody an email with that if, if that would help. So I would move that we report that to the council, save them, study taking down the liners first and paying for that with the funds that are available, um, uh, get a real cost on the preservation the community groups and the preservation groups, get together and figure out a fundraising plan and that we reconvene this task force to look at how much it's gonna cost, how we're doing on the money from the community from the TIF and possible private sources. And I just have one question. This is Deborah again. I, I heard you mention a possible private sale. If a private sale is done, would this be a sale in which all of the money's raised and the money's coming from the city will go into the project and the person buying it buys it for a small amount of money? Or will it be a private sale in which it will be sold for an amount that will give monies back to the city and monies back to the organizations that raise the money. De Deborah, as I understand, you know, the, uh, some of the ideas around that would be that a, a developer might come in and purchase this asset with the intent of doing the renovation itself. Um, and they would do that for their own sort of tax incentive benefits and other things like that. So it would, it would rid the city of this obligation. I think in, that's the idea of it. And so there, therefore we would then no longer have that responsibility of coming up with the funds. Sounds like a plan. I, I, I would just, um, William say that unless somebody's going to charge for somebody to ride up an elevator in the stack or, or to look at them or something like that, the only real financial benefit somebody's going to get from owning them is going to be the tax credit. And so um, um, someone would, who gets a tax credit is going to want to use part of it. So they, they're going to pay less than what the tax credit is, um, you know, for, for that interest. And um, unless they're just charitable, um, the, the one thing I would caution us all about, because I, th I think I know who the developer is um, uh, coming, who, who that is. Um, and, and I don't want to just move money out of one pocket of the city and put it in another. Um, so if, it, if it's some situation where he owes the city money, um, you know, uh, the is accounted for as parking revenue or some other kind of revenue. Uh, we're, we're just fooling ourselves if we're, we're saying, oh, okay, now all of a sudden we're going to say that parking revenue is now revenue for the smokestack preservation and we found the money um, because we were getting that money already. It's already part of our budget. You follow me? So um, anyway, we'll see what he comes back with, but um, it could be at least the tax credit part of it could be significant. It could be 25% of the project cost for all I know. So let's wait and see what happens. Um, right. I do want to ask Ken Granada a question. Ken, um, the thought of doing this bifurcated um, uh, or, you know, phased approach, is it, I know you would have to inspect the stacks after the liners removed and all, but is there even a good possibility that once the liner is removed, that you would feel as our uh, building official that the the immediate threat is gone and and um, you know we wouldn't have to have an evacuation plan or all like that. Uh, I I know I can't com commit you hard because you'd you'd have to inspect it after that occurs. But is there even a chance? 
Um, the, you know, honestly, Mayor, uh, um, I, I think, you know, based on the reports and the um, and Craig Bennett's assessment and, and the assessments of others, uh, the, the inner liner that, that uh, that's the, the eminent threat to the, the, the outer shell, if you will. And so I think we, I think we, you know, I think there's still some level, I mean, it's an old, you know, the outer shell's old and needs to be repointed and doesn't meet seismic and wind, but you know, the eminent threat right now, especially in the condition it's in, is that liner dropping and blowing out the, the bottom and then the whole stack falling. Um, so I think we mentioned it to Craig last time at the last meeting and he, you know, we talked kind of talked about a cost and, and he mentioned, you know, there's going to be a, an additional cost to, to remobilize. Um, and, you know, I don't know what that really is, but Craig did, did say that, yes, I mean, we've reduced it quite a bit uh, um, because that is the, the, the true threat here on, on the stacks. Um, you know, obviously the follow through uh, for the second part or the second phasing, if you will, if we do do separate these into phases uh, still would need to be done, but no, I, I, I would think that, that we, we could rest definitely more comfortable than, than its current condition. Great. So, and then if we move, remove the inner liner folks and we get all those bricks, Deborah will have some bricks to sell. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you, Mayor, I hear you, love it. Well, do we, I don't, uh, to, to try to, I guess, follow procedure, do we want to follow up? I mean, I kind of, I think everyone's clear on it, but as I understood your motion, John, uh, to see if we have a second was to, you know, make a recommendation to, to council that, you know, the task force has met. We have a unanimous support for the preservation of the stacks um, that we would recommend that they bifurcate the bid and begin a process of removing the inner liners and that the, uh, the task force and members and members of the community get together and create a, a fund fundraising uh, scheme to begin, you know, raising funds for the preservation of the, of the stacks. And, and the only thing I would add is that, and also to look at any other funding op opportunities like um, Councilwoman Del Chapo mentioned, um, perhaps some private partnerships or, you know, again, if, exactly. if more information becomes available about the TIF, uh, I saw Winslow's suggestion. So, to, to look at all the, the options for funding it. Okay. Do, do we have a, a second for, a, for that motion? A second, that report. Okay. Can, can I kind of have a caveat here? Um, because I, I fully agree we ought to look at every possible option, um, partnership, tax credit, whatever. I um, We know the, the expense is gonna be in a certain range. And, and so I would just respectfully ask that, that it's structured that we're not, or, or, uh, we're not gonna wait to put together the fundraising plan, that we go ahead and, and get that plan together and start on it and, and know that, well, gee, if we're lucky and we get $500,000 benefit from a, a tax credit somehow, um, well, that's that much less money we got to raise, but um, I, I, I just don't want to put us in a position where, oh, we're going to wait for all these other things to play out before we even start asking for money. I think we need to start in good faith that, um, um, you know, in the near future. And, and again, I mean, to the extent that, you know, I think that I can speak on behalf of ACF and probably the other groups too. I think they can get organized and start, start this process. Um, and, yeah, you know, I think, I think based on the motion and the idea, it seems like, you know, we're going to be given an opportunity luckily to have some time to, to do this. And with all the great ideas suggested today, you know, hopefully we all feel good that could be successful. In, 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 in the motion, I would certainly accept, a, if this is proper procedure, an amendment that before the part about um, looking at fundraising and ways to fund it, that we include the word, you know, promptly or, you know, with, with all deliberate 
paste or or whatever. I mean, I, I don't think there's any any attention by my group to sit around and wait on it. We just have to get organized with the, the council, uh, men and women on the committee and kind of get it going. But but I think the plan would be to go ahead and have that talk as soon as we can get it, pull it together. And I think that, you know, John, as of today, this is what we would report to council, but certainly over the next two weeks, something may, something else may come to light sure. that would then be a report to council. Sure. What would be, what I think would be really helpful is if you can email that to us and then if it needs to be amended before the next council meeting, then we can, we can do that. Sure. I'll be glad to tap it out. And, and, um, should, um, uh, should I just email it to everybody? I'm not sure if I've got everybody's email address, but maybe I could mayor draft, um, Ms. Bailey, um, if she's got everybody's address to send it around, if I send it to her. Yes, absolutely. Right. And just, and, and again, I'm not the best parliamentarian here, but just to finish the order, I guess, that John, you made your motion, uh, Councilman Del Chapo seconded, and just so we have this all in favor of that motion as, it, as we now understand it, with the caveats and amendments, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, all right. Well, the, the eyes have it. It sounds like we have at least something to present here in a couple of weeks. John's going to follow up and formalize that. And then um, obviously there's, there's more work to be done. All right. Thank you, everyone. And, and sorry. if I may ask if we could uh, please try not to drag our feet. Uh, one of the fastest things to get going is a GoFundMe page. And that is, a, is at least one thing that can be posted as soon as the team comes together on making the decision so why and immediately we, put out. Go ahead, Latonya. Why don't we just schedule a date for the team to come together and decide what we're going to put out so it could be uniformed and um, give ourselves a start date. So I'm available next week. Um, and I know that's putting it out there, and I know everybody's busy. But the sooner we start, the better. I think we can better chance we'll have. Do you want? Do we want John? Do you want to send around an email and then let us put, see if we can get the, the dates going there? Would that work, uh, Ms. Campbell? I, I, yeah, I'll I'll do that. Yeah. I'm sorry, Latanya. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say, and, and I would probably want to loop somebody for this part of it from the Preservation Society staff in to kind of, um, you know, help with the logistics of it. But, um, you know, um, I, we schedule stuff regularly, so we can certainly get the scheduling ball rolling. Okay. Yeah. So within the next two weeks, we can meet, if not next week. I, I personally could do could do it within the next two weeks, and I I'm certain that that somebody from preservation staff could do it on that time table. All right. Well, y'all have my contact information. Hey. All right. Two, two weeks is a kind of long time. Will it really take two weeks for us to meet? <laughs> I, I, and not, let me tell you why I say this. And I, I know it's me. It's probably just me. But I don't believe in letting a lot of that moss grow. It's like once we make a decision, if we could come together and look at it and get it started, at least we will have something constructively moving as we consider other things. Two weeks is a long time, guys. The only question that I would ask, and, and I would have to get asked for some guidance from the city folks here, can we actually do something before city council receives our recommendation? Would we be perceived as kind of jumping the council if we actually act before they do? Or could we go ahead and start doing something? I'll be honest with you. I think it would be a powerful message if by the time we met in two weeks, you had your Facebook page up and your GoFundMe account and, and you're collecting money already. I think it would send a strong message. Okay. I agree 100% with that because I can push the council there and say, look, they are doing something because they right. want to preserve it. They are doing something already. So that would give me more ammunition to fight too. Right. They'll see that 
we'll they'll see that we're serious and there's an intention okay. and there's a strong intention. Okay. Well, if, if it wouldn't be perceived as impertinent or insubordinate to go ahead and get rolling, then uh, then we'll we'll try yeah. to go ahead and get. We some welcome stuff. money at all times. <laughs> <laughs> That was probably a foolish thing for me to say. I understand that. <laughs> well, I, I wanted to say I'm going to get behind the mayor and I, I'll donate too. I'll even drop off a check at Winslow's house tonight on my way home on my bike, if, if that's okay. <laughs> All right. Tell him to expect him, William. <laughs> you will appreciate that. Evan. All right. Okay. All right. Well, thank All you. Right. I've got to run to the West Ashley Revitalization. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, everybody.